folks and welcome back for another video. So I'm going to play what has to be the, one of the most quintessential pieces for alto sax ever. Uh, the Pink Panther, now this really is up there with pieces like Baker Street or perhaps Careless Whisper, the sax solo from that, things along those sort of lines. But can you play the ABRSM version, the, the arrangement done for grade 5 ABRSM is quite tricky. The way it fits with the piano part is certainly not one of the easier pieces in that list. But it's such a cool piece to play. I'm, I'm sure that loads of people are going are gonna to choose to have a go at this one. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make this sound really awesome. Here we go. Okay, so you've heard the piece. Let's see if I can offer you any words of wisdom on this music. So first of all, let's just have a little chat about those finger snaps. Just be careful that you don't get so engrossed in those finger snaps that you mess up that first entry. Now, I've got a little bit of a confession. Now, I did a few takes on this piece and um, I did on the very first take mess up the entry because of those fingers. I was getting so into those snaps that I messed up the first note. So don't fall for that like I did. Just make sure that you plan that carefully. So if you are going to do those finger snaps, keep the instrument close by. If you miss that first note in the exam, it could be a tad embarrassing, I think. And let's have a little talk about the accents. Now I've noticed when I've played this through with pupils, they are struggling a little bit to really isolate this and get it sounding perfect. So try to bring out the accent as the main note and the other note, the note that's actually on the beat, try and keep that as quiet as you can. Try and keep that out of the way. So you're aiming for... So I exaggerated it a little bit there, but that's along the lines of what you're trying to achieve. Now when you've got a few of those in a row as well, it makes it a little bit more difficult as well because you've got to get them sounding you've got to get them sounding all the same and in bars 7 and 11 just be careful that that rhythm doesn't kind of run away with you keep it quite straight keep the semiquaver quite late <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Don't let it get too. So just be careful that that bar does sound like it's in time relative to the previous bars that you've just played. And onto the glisses. Now, this is a bit of a feature of this piece. Now, pupils, again, just struggle to really sort of nip this in the bud. And you've got to be careful that you don't get so caught up in that gliss that you lose where you are in the music. Now, there's a few glisses in this, and some of them are on slightly easier notes than others. Now, the easy one, the easiest one on there that I can think of is the one at the key change at bar 22. So as you play this, now that's a nice easy one because you've got fingers up and you've got plenty of fingers to put down to do that gliss. But then if you compare that to, say, doing a gliss off E, which is perhaps the first one, that's a little bit tricky because you've already got more fingers down. So just be conscious of that one. That is a bit fiddlier to gliss from. So you're basically trying to put all the fingers down. So pretend you're playing perhaps to the bottom note of the instrument, but without actually hearing the bottom note. I think that's the, the key thing is you don't want to really hear a bottom note as such. So, so as you get down to the bottom, you can perhaps hear the key work, but not actually hear the notes quite so clearly. Now bars 18 and 19, this is a really famous bit from this tune. Just make sure you play the articulation as written. Don't be too sloppy with this. And then make sure you tongue these accents. I think this is really important. Because you're not really gonna be able to do those accents unless you tongue them. So if you just kind of play it just sounds a bit more, that was extra sloppy, wasn't it? It just sounds a bit more sloppy, I think, if you just try and use the, the key and, and don't actually tongue the note. So I'll just play that again. Okay, and moving on through the middle section, this is certainly going to be the crunch point for most pupils. This is much more difficult to fit with the piano Perhaps make sure you listen to this piece and follow it through with the piano part so you know how the saxophone fits with it. Don't just rely on the piano to follow you. Now this is quite a tricky section. Now if you've managed to get through that section in one piece with the piano, then it eventually comes back and it comes back to the home tune again. You're back on sort of home ground. Now I particularly quite like this section at 38 just before it comes back to the well-known bit again. I really quite like this. So there's something quite satisfying about it. There's something quite nice about that. And then back to the key change. So I think in summary, we can say that it's a great piece to play. I think the sheer kudos of playing the Pink Panther, you know, is gonna please a lot of pupils, but just be aware, this really is not one of the easier pieces off the list. Um, use the code in the back of the book to download the ABRSM piano track and have a go at playing along with it and you'll see what I mean. It really is quite tricky to play along with. But if you're up for the challenge, I think you're gonna have some fun with this one. Okay, so that's it from the tutorial side of things. Now I'm gonna play a few sections in the piece with a metronome click track. I'm gonna play from bar 22. Have a go, grab your sax, put a read on there and see if you can play along with me. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna play from bar 22 through to bar 36 with a metronome. I've set it to 92, which is quite steady. See if you can play along with this. I think this will set you up a good foundation for this piece. Here we go. A one. Two, three, four.
So I hope that helped with that tricky middle section. So I'm going to replay the performance now and turn down the saxophone part. Have a go at playing along with that piano part yourself. See how you get along with that. Okay folks, so I think that's a wrap for the Pink Panther. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've used the video, all of it, and tried to play along with those sections as well. Let me know in that comment section how you're getting on with this piece. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, do check out my other grade five videos for saxophone, and I'll see you on the next video. Keep practicing, bye.